God God has also given you capacity for you to create your own businesses in the name of Jesus. How important you were to that company. They can even entice you with an increase of salary. Why? Because you are important only as a work. Until the day you start to think for yourself. Listen to me. There are hard truths you need to tell yourself financially. This afternoon it might sound very hard to some of you, but some of my emotions you remain poor for life. I need to tell you the truth as a pastor. Can you say amen? amen. And one of the things you should be able to know as an individual is that there is no, tell yourself that even if there are people that are trying to help you, tell yourself that there is no one in this world who has gone to take on my pain in life. That's maturity. Tell yourself that there is no God who should be responsible over my life, my life as a human being. No God. It's not just cutting hell, it's not because you are not appreciating what other people are doing for you, but it's taking responsibility over your life. And when you get people that come to help you, you will start if you have that kind of mindset, you will appreciate them better. Anyone who comes to help me, I appreciate them a lot because I'm already busy helping myself. So whatever they come to do, I have a high, high regard of appreciation because I know what it takes. Because I'm already busy trying to do myself. That's why you even undervalue what some people are doing in your life because you don't even have an understanding of what it takes. When the children saw young girls singing in the deep. <laughs> the average person, how much do civil servants earn in this country? In US dollars? Let's say 300 for goodness sake. Very <laughs> bad. Right. If someone is earning $300 in a month, you see them waking up, going to work, wearing whatever uniform they need to wear for them to go to work for 300 bucks in a, in a month. Right? And they are doing all of this and when I was there, they bring you. Somebody from that $300 gives you $100 to say, take care of things. When you take a junior 20, you take a skipper say Uzi. And a whole lot of other that you do. Yes, take a ice cream lap on a land, 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 land. You have squandered a third of what someone is making in a month, in a day. And the reason why you can do that is not really because you are irresponsible, per se, but because you don't understand. The process of what it takes for someone to come and bless you with a hundred dollars. If from their three hundred they gave you twenty, it's a sacrifice. When well, I don't know it, you don't know it. So you want to know? Unto me, she has said, "Nigi twenty who pay her." Hmm? Can me show you? Unto me, she has said, "Nigi twenty who can nigi twenty." In twenty from three hundred, I won't imagine. Because how, how many hours do that person need to sacrifice for them to get to that twenty? When well, I have no understanding of, because remember, you are not into the systems of life. So you cannot understand the value of how this 20 came about. That's why you can squander it whichever way. Oh, sevens, I want to get a I want to get a chicken. I want to get a food. I don't know if I'm going to get chicken. But you understand what I'm saying. Sevens, if you're young, you're not going to get a food. That's why I'm going to get a So we have a balance, but it's a particular way. But Lord, no sevens, wherever you have at home, one kid, children, whichever one it is. Do they also have an understanding of the pressure that it takes for you to get to this amount? Because without this pressure, you will continue in financial pain in that home. Because you will not be having an understanding of the process of what it takes for you to get that level of amount. You can only imagine getting a soul to go so. I will receive. I will understand two words that I will give you my own way. That's not because he has an understanding when I was with him we are talking. I used to be very good to everyone. That's when I moved around town, just see someone say, Ah, no, tell me that the Lord I give you. What is the only place to have one as your father? <laughs> now I become smart. Someone ask me for money, what can you do? I would rather give you money because you shine my shoes. It's better than just giving you money for nothing. No, 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 it's better. That's why I can give boys that just come to clean my car money. I can give them, at least they have done something. You should even understand in my life where money comes via processes and systems. And you must invest yourself in those systems. 
Sunga Kuli Lepon will be a Wotan, we are in Mulalai. Every other way, Bushi. Amen. 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 So when you see people coming in, giving their money to God, you should understand where they are coming from. They are giving of their sweat, where they have gone through, and they are coming to God so that God may bless their work. I wonder what they have a young man. I go, who we are in jail. It should just be like that. There must be your part and your process in the contributions of the issues of life. Can you give me an amen? Amen. Say need. Need. Will eliminate excuses. Last need will create pressure to achieve. I said number one need will create responsibility. You are irresponsible because you've not understood the need of why you are doing what you should do. Number two, need will eliminate excuses. As long as you still blame this and blame that for you're not doing anything, you will have not caught the need yet. And it's mostly because someone is still shielding you from the pain that you're supposed to go through. There is pain, but that is important in life. That develops life skills that are important for growth and for development. Praise the Lord. Amen. Isaac Oyejepo, the first born son of the man of God, Bishop David Oyejepo, who has been said is the richest man of God in the world. He says one day his father called him, opened up a bank account for him and gave him cards and said, this is your bank account. He says he left the house so excitedly. Imagine if you're richest man in the world. In the richest pastor in the world, he has given you money and you know cards and all of that. Says so the first thing that he thought about was quickly going to a mall and he put his bank account there and he found 0. 0.00. <laughs> he put all the cards and put the black card and all that I can found that there was 0. 0.00. He returned very sober to his back. I said, I <laughs> Whatever is going to come from there, you must work for it. Amen. Let me tell you something. Even if you think you are rich, because in Africa, that's our problem. <laughs> Even if you think you are rich, train everyone. Everyone must go through that process. Everyone must have an appreciation of every dollar that comes their way. I said, even if you think you are rich, because you might not really be rich, but you think so. And in those circumstances now, you need to create, listen to me, you need to create poverty to appreciate prosperity. Especially for these ones that have been born already in an atmosphere like this. I know that as parents, we all want our children to have a better life than ourselves, which is very good. But what you can give to your children is not wealth that you have attained. It is a mind that can attain their own wealth. I'm hoping you now. When they ask the man, there's, there's a man today is still alive, the man that built to buy. When they ask him and say, ah, oh, with all that you have achieved, what would you want to do for the next generation? He said, I fear for the next generation. Because we built something from nothing, from a desert, and we built what we are seeing today. And I feel that our children today are already enjoying all of that, they will build nothing in their lives. They're just coming in to enjoy all the world of Dubai. But what are they going to be able to create for the next generation? That's not the story of Africa. All those people who don't build the beauty that you are seeing every day. You didn't build them. Smith built them. You are still enjoying the world of Smith in today's generation. What have you done with yourself? Nothing. All we do is complain. We can't think anything. We can't build roads. We can't put buildings. We can't put anything. Why? Our mind has not been created to pass on the world from generation to generation. Come, hey. So, the last one that is supposed to create pressure for you to achieve. Necessity should create pressure for you to achieve. When you realizing the need for money, you can't be seated. Without realizing the need for money, you can't just be seated and just be comfortable in your bed. You must wake up, you must do something, you must make a move. This is the beginning of your life when you want to be prosperous in life. There must be that push, that understanding, that need for you to move and go forward. One of the other strange things I find about Africa is that we are content with the solid 
contend with Sonic. I asked the average politician, and he said to me, one time I was talking to a particular politician, he said to me, ah, in Africa it is so easy to be a politician because people don't want much. What do you say? People don't want much. I don't enjoy. Hi, you don't enjoy. Hi, what is your company? Who was with the funan? So what confused? The devil was the second he said about the devil was not as much as he was. What are you fool now? Umbus. No, the best is you know, it's to enjoy and as far as it's to enjoy. What is the fool now, Miss Ivy? Most of us, what we want is just a job. That's the problem. Two of us are best and right. Most of us, yeah, I told you, hey, don't want to pay the good and fit the family. I'm sitting. We have been so destroyed, we don't think much. We don't even want much. That's why, that's why African presidents and politicians are like this, because the easiest people to please are Africans. The British Prime Minister, I mean, he had to even come to a point of a deadlock. Not because the country has got no water, has got no food, has got no roads, everything is so sweet in UK. But I know the British Prime Minister now is stepping down. Why? Because of Brexit deal. Someone just failed to make a deal. Hey, that's why you're not going to be able to do it. Hey, that's why you're not going to be able to do it. You're not going to be able to do it. It's not part of you. We're not going to be able to do it. We work well with Europeans. No, we need to be separate on ourselves. This is what people are arguing. And it's important enough to make politics. Now, pass through now my life needs. We're going to be able to do it. We're going to be able to do it. What was it? What was it? I'm not going to find a president. I am for the next 15 years. I am going to be a star. 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 That's how bad Africa is. At least if I just do a little change, I am going to be a star. How everyone is happy. That's how poor we have become. So we have a generation of people who don't want much. We don't want much. So because of that, we don't really see the need of money and wealth. We just see the need of survival. What we're actually looking for is survival in terms. Not really money. We don't know what to do with it. That's where problems come in. Africa has money problems. We are seeing the money as many problems. Ah, we are going to have some money because we don't get any money. Mama Nkwala, I saw she say because she said she don't want to be mad. Ha ha! That's why you have got all these problems. Men don't want to be made to work. It's only in Africa. So ah, I was saying no. Ha! Because we have a problem as we move to Africa. No, come to us. We don't trust each other with women. The same with women. She prays to God, God bless us, but not that much. Because lay, I was the man lay. Dear Lord, we need to think well. There is money to do more than just for your family, to build cities. We can build nations. Can you say amen? amen? We can build the kingdom of God. There is more that we need to do in this life and they need the real well. Can you give me an amen? amen? And to achieve this, now I'm going to the second part of my teaching this afternoon. You must pursue knowledge. What did I say? Now you have understood the need. Now you need the right knowledge of how to acquire finance. The right knowledge. Knowledge does not just come as we come from, from comfort of your city. That's one of the reasons why people despise the knowledge we give in church. A pastor who is teaching you is better than a pastor who is conducting deliverance. This is not me very well. Not that the other is wrong. All are good. All are very wonderful. But value knowledge. Value knowledge. But unfortunately, you know, you should never be a mahara free church. I see, I see, I see, karatees. I see, kar. You must always buy the truth and sell it not. Buy wisdom. There must be somebody should text you to pursue knowledge. Pursue knowledge. I said to you, the average person is not buying books; he's buying pizza. The average person in Africa, they are buying all kind of things except for things that should progressively move them from where they are to where they need to go. If you know, and I can change so much if you know, if you just know the right things right now. If man is not mysterious, you can know what is money, how to achieve money, where to, what to do when you get the money. All these things you should be taught, and unfortunately, none of our schools teach that. 
The other problem with our educational sector, one of the greatest problems, Uba says, school is full that. You turn to Shabusa? The past 100%. I know so far, say, 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 problems we left that been important. You better junior. The boy one day went to school to learn mathematics and accounts and English. By now he's a deputy running business and he's become the resident pastor of the London Church of Sweet Embers. He's 18. How old are you? 18. <laughs> there are boys like Miss and Greenwood, boys that play soccer. They say at 10, they can already own up this boy is very gifted in this. Do nothing else except soccer. So the boy has done soccer all his life. When my wife is back We don't have practical development to wealth. We want to bump into it. We want to attain it whichever way. We are not bold to make decisions. I said, pursue knowledge. You're like, oh, when I will use my money in, suppose. There are men who today are in universities for the sake of it, because who is your university? Anyway, we have advanced level now, I don't pass it. Who is your son? But you in Zanya University. It's a great learning in land. I said, who is it? Zawon and Juta will come with Eta, okay. How much money are you going to make? That's another problem in Africa. We have very strange assumptions of life. There is no correlation to money to what you are doing. Nothing at all. That's what is called bad knowledge. You are starting, but you are starting the wrong things. Pursue knowledge. Pursue knowledge. I will keep emphasizing throughout the month. Mental transformation. It's our month of meditation. Mental transformation. Pursue the right knowledge of life for you to grow and develop. Can you say amen? amen. Pursue the right knowledge of life. First of all, knowledge makes life good. I know a lot of things. I'm a pastor. I know a lot of things. Trust me. Back then I used to tell myself a principle that I should know something about everything. Something about you. Everything. I should know something about everything. I may not know everything in life, it's not possible, but I should know something about everything. Ask me anything, anything in any field today, at least I can have two sentences concerning it. That's how I am. I have started enough to know that you need to know so many things in life for you to be a useful person in the way. Be useful. I can fit in many places. I can relate in many dimensions. Look at all of you right now. You are a representation of my capacity as a person. Because all of you here, you are different in nature, different in mind, different in capacities, different in, in skill and all these things. Yet I can relate with all of you at the same time. That takes very strong relational skills. And you don't do that when you are a one-minded person in what you are in Can you say amen? You cannot do that when you are not studious. You cannot do that. You know, you can do that when you are not every Sunday says, you can't do that when you are not every Sunday. I want to say, one person said, I have to do that when you are not every Sunday. I Every time I go to the phone, me just straight and just clear. As I will a joke party, I will a go a corner, a go bed. Phone go and jazz. Hi, hi. Tell me the answer now. Now it is the man you are not. Invest in your mentality. Invest. If there is something you are going to do this year, say I am going to invest in my mentality. I'm going to invest in my mind. Many women don't know why they're not married today. They don't know. 
You see why the men cannot serve you are beautiful. You have so much done all the investment on the outside. You have so far this put the mama or farama foundation number five. What get the one about who say how are far Brazilian hundred percent hair on your head, but it's on top of your head, inside the plan. That's the problem. You are investing on what you come on top of what you've been inside. So you are busy going out on dates and these men are looking at you. They can see that yes, everything on outside is very fine, but inside, inside, who learn the parrot? I am going to relate with what is in here for the rest of my life. My children are going to be raised by what is in here for the rest of my life. Because beautiful outside, be beautiful in here. Yes. And it's the same with you, men. I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was watching America, my man, I got to wear a cap. I don't know who's wearing caps. But I think that I'm not wearing a cap because I understood that whatever is on top of my head is not as important as what is inside my head. <laughs> ah, you have six feet we can see. But my six feet is not going to run a family, my brother. You are investing so much on the outside. You look nice, you have a wonderful haircut, we can see that. But it's here, here, it's only by here. La, 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 la. Because we need to eat every day. As I said, this is six pages in Zalwa. You say, amen. The only man who is in his own way, what do you mean? That's not being protected. Nothing is as, is as bad as feeling useless as a woman in front of a man. Because the man can't provide, the man can't just do anything. I think when you go up and say, I'm to go to the to go to the house. I'm going 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 to go to the No one will treat you the way they are treating you if you are an asset. I will tell you something very powerful. Are you an asset? Are you an asset? You will be disvalued if you are a liability in life. It doesn't matter how much your husband likes you. If he feels you are his liability, his treatment will change towards you. So bring value to yourself. Bring value to yourself. That's not how much your wife loves you. If you are a liability, she will soon change. Am I much in favor? Can you say amen? amen? How you were feeling when you were 80 is how you are going to be feeling when you are 36. For that, you are going to be with. Can you say amen? Amen. Be an asset. Refuse to be a liability. Be an asset to earth. Everywhere I am, I am important. People that are relating with me should feel my importance. That's if you don't know, fund this, I'm not fund this. He's an asset in my life. He contributes so much to me. Can you say amen? Amen. I can example I don't have any asset. That's the wrong food, it's not only a problem, you are just losing it. Like I said, I'm going to say, 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 you want someone who is an asset in life. You, we all relate better with the people that are contributing part of our lives, part of everything that we are. So I'm saying, as a person, invest in yourself. Invest in yourself, and you will be able to invest in yourself financially as well. Can you say amen? Amen. I said to you that they say in first world countries, the reason why their countries are successful financially is because everyone what? Contributes. Say it again. Say everyone? Contributes. So now if you want to be successful, make sure that from your house, 
everyone contributes. I will have to go to the next level. I will have understand all the need. Everyone can participate at whatever level of life they are. I will talk about physical goals in the money. You know, you don't want to, you don't need money for you to maintain a balanced diet. That's what some person will tell us on the vlog here. And with, with $20, you can buy a coat that is balanced. Hello, what are you I want to put 10, put 20 kg, put 30 kg. I'm going to put 30 kg. I'm pushing man. You, you, you can use the same amount in a little bit of a big pan and say, man, I'm a virtual tool, you can say, amen. You don't need to eat, and not have to be sat up for you to be a meal. Hey! Oh, balance and jenga, balance up. The total pillow becomes happier. You can, I'm trying to help that you can start from, everyone can start from whatever level. You cannot develop your family level in a level of EU. Pursuing knowledge also will help you to understand that in as much as you want to be successful in many areas of life, you can't be successful in all of them at once. You need to balance. Send the matters. Right? Because some of you are not going to be developing physical goals. How be civil, how you have to be in your job, we are done. Who's talking about it? When I want to have a film saying, we are in the know what's the truth saying? What if he's now got a little joke about one and to be someone and I wouldn't put on him, but I'm all a man who did the only one. So you are suffering other areas of life as you are busy with this one. You see? There are many things I want to do with my life. I can't do all of them. So sometimes they are going to go to La Panagan, La Panagan, La Panagan. Why? Because there are others which are more important than others. Yeah, yeah. There are others which are more important than others. So your spiritual life is very important. You can't suffocate your spiritual life for anything. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. <laughs> so I'm saying balance now. Your spiritual life comes first. Can you say amen? amen. When you speak in tongues, just you don't know joke or who's strong. Okay, then your spiritual exercise profited all. And God exercise profited all. But physical exercise profited what? Leak. So you get all leak, you will leak. You all, you will You all. Your financial goals are important. <laughs> because everything else that you want to do in your life will require man, including your physical goals. And now, now we are joking, so we are and them say now we six, we joke and joke, we feel tired. How? What did my dear look now? But now look at joke, we are thinking. I know that I want to have a plan. I'm to to i i Financial goals must be important. You can't go on a holiday without money. You can't live on without money. You can't be beautiful without money. When you must take a cool when I was asked, I was born in our years. So no one ever done that. We are not going to be better than every mother I've ever seen. You just didn't know. Ah, that's the more karma. So we are going. But as a wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. As an animal is a defense, it is equated to wisdom. I want you to listen to my level defender is. I would defend that is. Because I stay in bed side, I need to ask the old Mundala or Salavanda. And I'll never go now. That's your big green ninja, the woman in the Italian street who is living at town. So I want to have a woman who is a driver, as in two men, he is a bed. He's got some spell on the scene, this is shiny. But 
to the priest, he shall cause. Someone say he shall cause. So if blessing was alone, who don't want to be a man or cause that blessing to manifest? This is where life is spiritual. As you do, as you pursue money, as you pursue your wealth, remember it is the Lord your God who gives you the power to make wealth. Which means wealth is a spiritual thing first before it is physical. I said this and I keep on saying it. God is able to make you very rich, very blessed, but you must trust Him by working these principles. The best of all your first fruits belong to the Lord. So when you take out your first fruit and you say, Lord, I'm coming to you and I'm giving it to you, you are showing God that you're not ready to do this by yourself. You are bringing and you are inviting him into what you are doing. And what shall he do? He shall cause the blessing to rest on your house. And this blessing makes the rich and has what? No sorrow with it. No. So our financial giving is in the house of the Lord. Don't just cover us financially. Don't think that way. Call it an ATM. You know, if I give $10, then God should give me 100 That's not how God does it. Your money, when you are giving it, changes from money. It becomes sacrifice. It becomes something else. And then God causes a blessing. Can you say amen? amen. A blessing covers all round goodness. All round prosperity. That's a blessing. A blessing. You don't know what is coming your way in this year. You don't know what your children are going to face in this year. But as you give to the Lord, that blessing covers every other area of our lives. This is how I have enjoyed life for a long time today. Till to today, I just see God's blessings everywhere. Things sometimes that I ah, Lord, I never prayed for this, but it just happened to me. Why? Because I am a giver. And every time I give, God causes His blessing. Can you say amen? amen. To rest on everything to do with me. Whether it's financial, whether it's intellectual, whether it is a uh, physical, social, I am blessed in every area. That's the life you should have. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I, am blessed. I am so blessed in every area of my life. I, I really, really complaining is just for saying it because when it's back, you know, sometimes just have to complain for no reason. But really, we have no reason to complain. God has so blessed us. So blessed us. And every day you look at how many things can be going wrong. There is many things you don't have control over. Trust me. You are never smart enough, no matter how much rich you are, to have control over everything. You don't. There are many rich people without God today, yet they can't find sleep. You just don't know. I don't know when I'm social media. This is why I'm not going to see pictures of when I'm going to have a chance to stand. Who's that now? Hanya, who's your wife? Your wife, what are they going through here? You don't know anything. Don't know anything. I'm going to see you. I'm going to have a chance to stand. When I don't know. But when I'm going to be like, ah, hey. They are living today, even if they have money, you find that you live one day in KP. When I want to do it, I keep it. Who have no problems that people are not moved in his soul, but you don't see them for the sake of money. But it's for this reason, many have pierced their souls in search and in pursuit of money with many sorrows. People are living with many sorrows out there in the name of money. But I'm trying to show you the way of God. When you relate with God financially, you are bringing the peace of God that, that surpasses human understanding into your life. Can you say amen? amen. When you are relating with God financially, teach this to your kids. Teach this to. Even me, just till today, Jews are the most richest people ever on earth because they are the children of Abraham, but because they do what Abraham did. And Abraham's Jewish child at six, he has three, three boxes at home one for tithe, one for, 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 for investment, savings for investment, and another one savings for life before he can eat. So at six, so I was to have an man, that if I take the same him. Keep paying your footing into La Pana, near investment, your businesses are yen. Keep paying your footing, Fire La Pana, meeting near my savings and be 36. How old are you? From this three, we'll leave you one and give. Now, let's have one of you. You don't let six, you let no one three out, but the ten of Sasa. When we shall own. But then we keep blaming God. If God can only bless us, if only a miracle can happen, even if the grace of miracles can happen, 
I will never forget in 2015 we prayed for a man who won Lord. To today we are looking for that man. You are not the tiny army who has a empty room, that one. Hey! And guess what? He is broke today. Money was only is nothing. Money, money, I wish you know. Money. If not, you don't know what you to do in the name of the Lord. That's the kind of way we are. We are not just strong guys of the rich now. So we look for some people who are ah, can you imagine seeing that? We saw the video last two ah. Oh, the other five people said so one, two, three, four. We look. Imali apela was one. I want to demote in Ghana. Imali apela. Imali apela. So we start a need for is to be able to multiply it. To be able to multiply. God does not want to give you things all the time, miracles all the time. God should give you something and you multiply it, and from that time, it continues happening in your life. Can you say amen? amen. That's the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord should be able to make you rich and have no sorrow with it. Whatever God gives you must not multiply, must continue to multiply in your life. So, how good are you in this? I said, pursue financial knowledge. We have many teachings in this that talk about finance. We have many teachings that God has given to us. That people blessing us, prospering us. Are you able to take those teachings? Why are your mind in a particular way? Why are your mind going for God? Can you say amen? amen. Now, last scripture, Proverbs 3. We read it last Sunday. I will close with it. Verse 9. What does it say? Honor the Lord with your possessions. Uh-huh. Honor the Lord with your possessions and the first fruit of all your increase. Verse 10. So that your hands will be filled with plenty and your hands will overflow with wine. So that your hands will be filled with plenty. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God is able to give you plenty. Trust Him. He is telling you the principle so that your bonds will be filled with plenty and your, your vats or your wine presses will be overflowing with what? With the new wine. I said to you last time that it's not mysterious that people are going through what they are going through. We don't believe God. We don't. We say we do as believers, but go back to verse 9. You have been born again 15 years. Have you ever given of, the, of your first fruits to the Lord? Ask yourself. You hear someone say, ah, Proverbs is in the Old Testament. Psalm is in the Old Testament. The same person you hear them pray, oh Lord, you are my shepherd, I shall not want. Hey. <laughs> See the bundle of confusion in our today's generation. <laughs> if it's Old Testament, why do you want the one that you want on your own? When the other verses are coming, you don't like them. <laughs> When the same day he says, and therefore I have given up my, of my vows to the Lord, you don't like that kind of verse. You like the one that says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Let's be smart as believers. Hello? He says, honor, worship, honor the Lord with your possessions. Honor the Lord with your, with your substance. If this is what God has told you, he is telling you how to worship him. He is the God that you are worshiping. When you can't change the way of worship, he is telling you, this is how you show that you really honor me. When you honor me with your possessions and the first fruits of all your increase, you show that you put me first in your life. Put God first in your life. We have been pushing you. How far can you go? We have been putting you first. That's what they say in, uh, in worldly business terminologies. They say, pay yourself first. That's in the world. Can you put God first? If you pay yourself first, then you have all your bills. If you get your tithe, then you are the one to rebuke the devourer for your sake. Is that what the prophet says? Bring the tithe, then I will rebuke the devourer for you. When I, if you eat the tithe, it means you are ready to rebuke the devourer for your sake. You know? You see why people go through things that they go through. And we don't even know. We say, ah, but he's a believer. His business, was just, his business is going through all these things. Why is he going through all of these things? Is he doing what God has said? Listen, I'm going to our feet now. Second Corinthians. Um, chapter 9. Let's go to verse 8. Hallelujah. Okay, let's start from verse 6. So we can understand it. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. 
This is financial knowledge and wisdom. Understand God when he's talking to you. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. So life should not be mysterious. Every day you are sowing seeds of life. How are you sowing them? Financially, academically, whichever way you are sowing them. How are you sowing them? Just if you are doing it sparingly, you will definitely reap sparing results in your life. So what we have is what you deserve. You know? Yes, from the scriptures. What we have is what you, is what you are really doing. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Verse 9, 7. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful God loves a cheerful giver. He wants you to be cheerful as you are doing it. So do this, what you are doing, as you purpose in your heart. When you do it this way, what happens? Verse 8. And God, come and say, and God. And God is able to make all grace. How many graces? All grace. I'm trying to teach you that is very powerful this man. Stuff that covers every area of your life. It says that God is able to make all grace abound toward you. All grace. So, my giving covers everything about me. All grace. I may be giving a financial seat before God, but God is covering my children. God is covering my family. God is covering my health. God is covering every other thing that has to do with me. That I don't even know. He's covering my future. He says, all grace can abound toward me if I am this kind of person. Invest in God. Put God first in your life. He says, and therefore he shall cause this kind of blessing to rest upon you. And that you will always have in all sufficiency in all things. We don't walk in this scriptures and you are born again. Particularly in this side of the world. It's, it's said the Bible, we all know it. But are we all living there? Imagine a life where you are always having sufficient. You can. I said you can. There is a life where you can always be having all sufficiency in all things. And you may abandon in every good way. That means you can always have abundance. Say, I always have abundance. How much time say, I always have abundance. There are many believers where they don't know abundance. They have never tasted abundance. All they know is little. All they know is survival. I can live a life where I'm always sufficient. Always having abundance. Always able to meet all my needs all the time. All the time. There is such a life. There is such a life. And that's the kind of life that I want to introduce this church to. I refuse to pastor broke people. Yes, amen. Can you say amen? amen? You know, in most churches, there is one or two or three, four people that are only known for finance. The rest are broke. Not in this church. Yes, they are so known. Everybody talks to them. Everybody goes there with their prayer request. Everyone goes there with some business request. It's like they are the Holy Spirit in the church. Hey. Man, what they the churches. God wants all of us to be wealthy. Okay. To be able to meet all that we have to do, whether it is in the house of God or in our life. We should be able to do it, and God's blessing is able to do that in your life. Yes. Can you give me an amen? amen. Lift up your hands towards heaven. Oh, you hear so much in this church. You hear so much. God is talking to you in different ways. The place of prayer, come on, is the place of commitment. It is a place you commit your life. It is a place you commit your heart. There are things that must change in your life. Make a commitment. Don't keep hearing words for them to just come and go. Let them make a difference in your life. Let me, don't just come up to and say, thank you, pastor. You will thank me with a Mercedes Benz letter. Just, just say, just accept the way they let it transform you. Can you give me an amen? amen? When it changes you and you go from here and you start applying, three months from now, your life will have taken a whole new meaning. Six months from now, you will be a different person altogether. I see a different year for you. Yes. Yes. Imagine how we are 
say my life is blessed. My life is blessed. I am in well. I, I am blessed. The blessing of the Lord. Make a marriage and have no sorrow with me. All I do prosper. Because I am connected to the Almighty God. As I give, as I partner with God's work, as I give of my substance, God is able to make all grace abound toward me. That in all things, I am always sufficient and always in abundance. In the mighty name of Jesus, I refuse, I refuse to be poor. The blessing of the Lord makes me prosperous. Yes. In the name of Jesus, yes. I lay aside yes. every weight of poverty. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. And I make a commitment yes. to do the work, yes. to act on the work, yes. and to walk in the light yes. of my prosperity. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. What we are doing is that we are building capacity in you. What you have capacity for, you can handle. I said to God, God will bless you according to your capacity. When the word of God is coming, it's building spiritual capacity in you for prosperity. I said February 6th, Sunday, February 6th. 2022, we have our first fruit and sacrifice service, and we are building up towards it. Can you say amen? amen. So I want to be ready because we have only one type of service like this for the whole year. But before we get there, I said on that day we come fasted, and this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we are fasting. We are here from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. Whatever time of the day you can come, come through and pray with us. Praise the Lord. I have been sensing this burden strongly. Strong. That's why we are calling for praying. In fact, we don't just call for prayer and fasting in this church. Praise the Lord. But this burden is very strong. There is that God wants to do in our life. There must be a divine release. Are you listening to me? And therefore we are pressing. We are pressing. There are many of you who have been with us long enough. There is that God wants to do in your life this year that has never happened before. Yes. That's why we are pressing like this. There is something that you need to move into that you have not seen happening in your life before. So we have to come in for this service and we pray. So by the time we get to that kind of service, we are all ready for what God is about to do in this year. Can you give me an amen? Yes. Lift up your hands towards heaven. The Lord bless you and keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may the Lord give you increase more and more. You and your children, may you be blessed of the Lord. You are blessed in your going out, you are blessed in your coming in. May this week be blessed for you. I stand as a priest of the Most High in your life to bless your week. Kabara Kabaha Sutis. The same way the Lord has blessed me all round, may He bless you all round. May you know peace and joy in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. As this week is coming to an end in January, may you end your week, your January in style. May you end your January with blessings. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your week is blessed. Hallelujah. Keep your hands and pray. Keep your hands and pray. Come and pray in the Holy Ghost and thank the Lord. Your week is blessed. Lift your hands and pray in the Holy Spirit. Sagabara de Gebosa Calabara Cabatati, Bosa Valade Gebosa, Radiga Shatene Bosa Gabaya, Lera Ushatana Bando, Lopura Shatta, 
Zabaso, the Dehi Bosa, Oshata Lagabase, Rodo Homo Shatalabanda, Leza Dagabazera, O Sadiga Baraja Garabashate. Now our week is blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory. blessed as a ministry to have such a man of God. Hallelujah. The things that we hear are life transforming. The things that we hear, you know, you know when you sit down and listen to our man of God, he, he touches every part of your life. Hallelujah. Our lives are transformed every day and we are grateful to our dear men of God for allowing God to use them to touch our lives and transform our lives. Praise the Lord. Well, if you are here in this place and you are not born again, you have not made the decision to make Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior, everything that you have had in this service cannot operate in your life until you make the decision to allow Jesus to be your personal Lord and Savior. I'd like to give you this opportunity to accept Him, to know Him, so that you can experience all the things that our man of God has proclaimed over us. If you're here and you're saying, Pastor, I, I don't remember a day that I made that decision. This is not about your family. This is not about the person sitting next to you. It is about you and Jesus. I want you to make that decision today. If you're saying, I have not made that decision, I want you to lift up your hand where you are. I want you to be bold with every eye closed. I want you to be bold. Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus today. I want to have a relationship with the Lord today. If you are that person this afternoon, lift your hand and I will help you make that decision. I will help you make that decision this afternoon. Is there anyone like that? Ask your neighbor and say, neighbor, I you born again. Have you made the decision to make Jesus your Savior? Ask them, what are they saying? Ask their response. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are all born again. Oh, hallelujah. That's lovely. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And if this was your and if this was your first time to be in our service, to be in the fellowship of the Good Kind Church service, do show us by lifting up your hand once again. We want to welcome you in a special way. If this was your first time, do show us. I see those hands. I see those hands. I see those hands. Praise the Lord. Why don't you take another bold step and come to me and come just right here in front of church. Come on, let's help them. This was your first time. I want to be happy. Come on, church. You are doing better. You are doing better than that church. Come on, you are so happy. You are celebrating. You are celebrating. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, it is such a beautiful thing to have you today. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Pastor Hilton Moyo, who was ministering right here, we would like to welcome you. And we would like to tell you, we love you so much. Praise the Lord. What do we tell to them, church? We love you. We love you so much. And we are so grateful to have you come to our service this afternoon. And we'd like to let you know that as well as for the Good Kind Church, we are open. Every Sunday we have our services, two services from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. and from 10.30 to 1 p.m. Do feel free to be a part of us as a family. Praise the Lord. Well, um, on my right, there's our dear assistant pastor, Mara. He's just going to take you for a few minutes to get to know you more and get to um, understand where you come from and to get to know about our ministry and our dear man of God. So I'd like you to just go with him for a few minutes. He's going to take your details so that we can call you during the week so that we can get to know you more. Praise the Lord. Well, church, you're going to uh, put your hands together even as you are now. Thank the Lord. Well, come on, church, you are great. Thank you.
Hallelujah. Well, you know, it's such a lovely thing when we are able to bring visitors to church. Pastor has always instructed us that it is our duty to win souls and to reach out to the world. I would like to encourage you. Don't come to these services alone. Imagine the things you are listening. Your neighbor needs to hear the message. Your friend needs to hear the message. Your workmate needs to hear the message. Your classmate needs to hear this message. They need to hear this message. Praise the Lord. Make sure next week you don't come alone. Say to your neighbor, don't come alone next week. Hallelujah. But well, before we close, if you are here, whether you have been a minister or a deacon, and you have not gone through our foundation class, I want you to lift your hand. If you have not gone through our foundation class, I want you to lift your hand. If you have not gone through our foundation class, have we all gone through our... Okay, right, let, let me say this. If you have gone through our foundation class, do lift your hand. If you have gone through our foundation class, and you have done all the topics, our foundation class, our NCRM foundation class, all right, so if you are not lifting up your hand, I want you to remain behind and we want to take your details. If you are a member within this ministry, you have to go through the foundation class. And we want to get ready to go through our foundation class so that you can be baptized and be put into the right department so that you know if the foundation is shaky, no matter how much you build, no matter how who you become in the ministry, if you have not gone through the foundation class, you are going to find it difficult to operate in the ministry because the foundation class tells you everything about FGKC. We want you to go through the foundation class. So before you go home, you're going to sit at the far, my far right, so that we can get your details and so that we can register you for our foundation class. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And all those that are above the ages of 21, you're going to see Deacon Mohammed is lifting up his hand. If you're above the ages of 21 and you are not married, and you are not married, Deacon Mohammed wants to see you after the service. All the leaders will remain behind for all the reports and all the meetings that are to take place. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, you will hold your neighbor's hand. Remember, Tuesday to Friday, we are praying. Tuesday to Thursday, we are praying and fasting. We are meeting here from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. for prayer. Make sure you are here. Praise the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and say, make sure you are fasting. Praise the Lord. And on Sunday, on the 6th of February, is our first fruit that our man of God has announced. So prepare your sacrifices and your first fruits for that service. We will share the grace and we will see you on Tuesday. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us forever. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we pray the dark of MGDC forever and ever. Amen. Behold, He has given unto you. So make sure you are seated on the far right. If you are